In this video, we're going to draw cute little box people. I'm also going to explain why you would want to draw cute little box people. And also, I'll give you a good reason to still buy the newspaper. Let's go. Hey everybody, thanks for watching Kyle Heath Art. As per usual, if you like this video, give it a like and follow my channel. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, support me on Patreon. I've got a link right down there in the description. If you've been following along with me through this life drawing series, then wow, you've come a long way already. We started off just drawing little stick figure people, and now we're going to draw something way more complex, way more like a human figure, because it's got actual form in it and you can put light and shadow on it. This is the mannequin. And if you haven't been watching the life drawing series, that's okay. I'm glad you're here and we're gonna have a fun time. No bones about it, drawing people is really hard. One of the challenges is that the human body is really complex. That was the goal of my stick figure video from earlier, was to teach you how to simplify this really complex figure into really basic shapes. In the stick figure drawing, we used sticks and ovals. Another challenge to drawing people is showing that it's a 3D object in a 3D space. People have form, they receive light, they cast shadows. We begin to wrap our heads around this with the mannequin, a person made out of boxes. If you practiced my cube video from earlier, you've learned to make a 3D box pointing in different directions, and you figured out how to cast a light on the box so that the box has highlights, midtones, and shadows. That practice is all the info we need to now make our more complicated structure of the human, the mannequin. So let's get into it. I'm going to draw five or six of these mannequins and walk you through the whole process. Now, I'm gonna be doing my drawing on the iPad. You're welcome to do that along with me if you've got an iPad. If you don't, that's no problem. Um, you can do the exact same process that I'm doing using a newspaper or a magazine. Just uh, get a newspaper or a magazine or something that has people that you can um, draw right over them. And if you're doing it the, the low tech way, then um, just get a marker or two. Maybe you'll get a red marker for the uh, stick figure drawing and then a black marker for the mannequin drawing on top of that. Now, if you're doing this on the iPad, I'll just explain to you the basic setup of what I've got going on here. Um, I'm using the same pictures uh, as I did for the stick figure, so you can just screenshot any pictures of people you find online, um, and that'll work great. And what I've done is I've taken one layer where I've put a picture, and then I've lowered the opacity 50% just to make the picture a little lighter. And then I've created new layers and I'm drawing on top of those. So I've got a stick figure layer and then I've got a mannequin layer on top of that. So those are the basic steps. So as you see with this process, I'm starting with our basic stick figure from earlier. So I've got the ovals in all the right places, and I've got some lines representing the uh, spinal cord and the arms and the legs. And that gives us the basic gesture of the figure as well as a really simplified form. Now, on top of that, um, I'm going to draw our mannequin figure. So this is where our box practice is going to come into play. So if you're doing it on the iPad, you can also lower the opacity of the stick figure layer if you want to. Um, otherwise, no big deal. Um, maybe use black over red so that you can um, see the final box more clearly. So. What I'm doing is first I'm finding the boxes and the shape of the ovals that I've drawn. The first thing that I do is I try to find the, the general center line of the box if the box isn't facing directly at me. 
From there, I try to find the vertical lines that constitute the edges of the box. So I've got a line in the middle, and then I should have three vertical edges that I just put little marks on just to give me a gist of the shape of the box. From there, that gives me a decent enough idea where I can create the 3D box shape. Now take note, your box might not be even. It may point up or down or left or right. So you might see the top side of the box or the underside of the box. It might twist. So this is where um, you really get to exercise that skill of um, trying to figure out the direction that a box is pointing. You'll notice that I'm using cylinders for the arms and the legs, um, but if you don't want to deal with that, uh, don't worry about it. The important part of this exercise is to simplify the head, the rib cage, and the pelvis as boxes and give a sense of those boxes pointing in a certain direction. That's what matters. Um, but if you want to do the cylinders, uh, drawing cylinders at different angles are a great way to practice. It's nice to have a toolbox full of a few 3D forms that you can use to simplify these real life subjects that you're looking at. So if you want some extra practice, you can take some time to work on how to draw a sphere, how to draw pyramids at different angles, cones at different angles. That's awesome practice. Now, in the future, your figures aren't going to be boxy, and they don't even have to have any construction at all if you don't want. Um, but these are exercises, and these exercises are key to comprehending your subject. So when you've made this mannequin practice intuitive, you've um, internalized this idea that the subject you're looking at is 3D, then from that point, you can give your figures form um, without making them look rigid or boxy. If you're having difficulty figuring out which way the rib cage tilts, which way the pelvis tilts, no worries, it's not exactly intuitive. When you look at a human figure from a profile view, um, it's not like those two boxes are totally vertical. The human body kind of makes this S shape, so Drawing the rib cage, the, the bottom of the rib cage kind of tilts forward, and um, the pelvis kind of tilts back. And this can be especially pushed if you know you have somebody who sits down in a chair all the time. They may have like an anterior pelvic tilt, which really makes their body look like it has that S shape. So if you're having trouble with getting the angles, try to find um, a profile view of a person and that's kind of a nice starting point for just getting a gist of how far forward or back the rib cage or the pelvis juts. Now, the second part of this exercise is to cast some light and shadow on our mannequins. This is just like the second part of our cube exercise where we shone a light down on the cube and then we had three tones to deal with. We had a light, a uh, mid-tone and a shadow tone. And out of those three tones, we tried to figure out, okay, where's, where's the light hitting? The general way to understand um, what value you should use is that if the light is shining directly on a plane, then it's going to be receiving all the light. It'll be a light color. If the plane is tilted away from the light, say at like a 45 degree angle or something, then it's only going to receive some of the light. And so it's going to start looking darker as less light hits the plane directly. And then as the plane starts being, you know, entirely perpendicular to the light or even more, the, a certain side starts pointing away from the light, that's when it's going to start being in shadow. It's not going to receive very much light at all. You can either use the light that is um, on the subject that you're looking at, or you can invent the direction of light yourself. 
in my practice drawings here, I've um, I've just put an arrow pointing at an imaginary light source pointing in it. So I uh, I didn't actually think to to use the actual light source from the subject. So I've just made it up by myself. So that's what those pointy arrows indicate is that is where light is pointing. From here, I just try to um, logic it out like. I may start with the shadow area and any plane that is not receiving any imaginary light from where that arrow is pointing, that's going to be dark. Um, if the light source is hitting it at like a 45 degree angle or more, um, then it may be in midtone. And then the parts of the forms that are receiving light, those I'm going to use the lightest value color. Now in my boxes, I'm assuming they're all a light local color and there's no reflected light or ambient light. If you don't know what any of those terms mean, that's, that's not a big deal. Basically what I'm saying is I'm being really simple here. Down the road, we'll get a more subtle model for how light works and that'll make these forms look even more realistic. But for now, we're keeping it really simple to just sell the idea that these forms have a real shape to them. Certain parts are receiving light and certain parts are not receiving light. Now to get even better at drawing these mannequins, uh, try not drawing directly on top of a picture. So just like we did with our stick figure practice, you can just look at a reference and draw your stick figure on a piece of paper and then you can draw the boxes on top of that. And then again, you can try to figure out where the light is coming from in your reference picture. These little mannequin practices are the first step to starting to see your subject as a 3D thing that occupies 3D space. The great thing about this is, number one, it simplifies drawing a really complex human figure. And number two, it answers your question of like, well, how do I do shading? You know, that's a really common question among artists is, um, I'm not good at shading. How do I do it? Well, this is the answer. Once you can conceptualize something as being 3D, then um, from there you just logic it out. Where's the light hitting and where isn't it? And um, the question of shading is solved because you have a better comprehension of the 3D shape of the subject that you're drawing. From here now, we're ready to step away from structure a little bit and add a little bit more life into our drawings. So for my next video, I'm going to dive into gesture, what it is and how to practice giving gestural lifelike shapes to the models that you're drawing. So enjoy this practice. I wish you luck on your mannequins. Thanks for watching everyone. Again, if you liked this video, give it a like and follow my channel. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, support me on Patreon. The link is down in the description. Thanks a lot. See you guys later.